Hello, everybody out there. This is Old Buck Dave of the Two Old Bucks, and uh, somewhere out there will be Dell zooming in to join us. Yeah, you're, yeah, I'm, I'm you're here. there. Okay, you're there. You are there. Good. Yeah, good, Old good. Buck Dale is out old here. Old Buck Dale, you're still you're still out there shopping, shopping around the planet. So, so where are you now? Actually, uh, uh, Dave, I'm in uh, Columbia, South Carolina. I'm, I'm sitting in a uh, in a place called the uh, Columbia Recording Arts Productions, a little place in Columbia. I thought, I thought. Oh, you're, good okay. Place. Oh, you're looking for good. a studio there. You're looking yeah, for, good place oh, to set up. Great. That's Columbia Recording Arts, Arts Production. Production. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's like a, according to the sign on the door, they you know, they do podcasts and thing. Everything comes out here is pretty good stuff. So okay. I talked right. them into letting me zoom out of here from them. So that's where I'm at today. Oh, that's great. That's but great. I can tell you how that started. There's a story behind I'd it. Love, I'd love to hear it. Okay. Come on, come on down. I am moving. Uh, I was moving in that direction, and uh, and I was in uh, Camden, uh, which isn't too far from Columbia. Camden, South, South Carolina. Carolina. Okay. Yeah. I don't know that one. And, uh, anyway, I, I was know, up in I know, that I know area. the real one. Okay. I'm so uh, I, I ran across the diner. And, okay. Uh, you were, you were hungry? Hungry? Yeah. I mean, I'm. Uh, I'm not. Uh, all I know is that uh, what I saw there was a uh, quite a few people there, and what I saw is there, one of their feature menus was uh, something called uh, Rhino Dung Soup. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Rhino Dung Soup. Well, right. Can't, can't get enough of that. Well, Why don't you want to explain? I, no, I'll tell you more about that later. Tell me more about. Yeah. So this, I. It occurs to me that everything uh, seems like everything on television and stuff like that either has to do with food, making food, diners, and yeah. this and that, and or or all these programs where you uh, buy an old house and rebuild it. So I mean, we're not we're not into the rebuilding things, but I think to become uh, if we want to become infamous, we should no, probably. I have think something. we're already infamous. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to be as famous, but I don't we, think that's going to happen. Well, if we, if we want to be famous, I figured I think you know I better I better see if we can get a food component in one of our uh, one of our programs. Uh, for example, uh, I mean, like think of our culinary past uh, where we uh, ate, uh, and I believe you were there. I know I was there several times. Rocky's rib joint. Oh, Rocky's, <laughs> yeah, that was in uh, Scott Haven, Scott Haven, Pennsylvania. Down Is that what that rib. was? Yeah, Scott Haven. That's a beautiful name for a town, Scott That's, Haven. And and where that was, was an old you, that was an old coal mining town. Yeah. <laughs> and where was the rib joint? Where was it? It was just along a dirt road there. It was just a uh, in an old strip mine or something, right? Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> it was a, it was a pretty uh, pretty elegant building. Yeah, it was pretty elegant. Or uh, not? Yeah, or not. But all, all in all, it was great ribs. Oh and, yeah, uh, you great know, so, man. so, uh, so that uh, I figured that qualifies us at least for uh, saying that we have some culinary uh, background. <laughs> you could yeah. you can elaborate on another ribs, time yeah. on that. Yeah, yeah. So so anyhow, I don't think they were dog ribs. Actually, I don't think that. No, I don't think so either. I'm pretty sure they was pretty good. And then they had uh, they had a uh, great uh, you know you got a nice slice of uh, bread there two, on that two thing. slices of white bread. Yeah, two slices of white. I bread. I remember that. Yeah. Do you I remember it was the, a, uh, town talk was it town talk bread it was it was yeah <laughs> pure white yeah quality quality stuff there, quality i'm telling stuff. you that was quality stuff and, and i like town talk because you could also take that fish in with a bologna sandwich and use the bread That's for right. bait. you could eat it or you could use it for bait i did that <laughs> just dough it dough ball it up yeah, yeah many times it would stay consistent for a long yeah. time on there so yeah so anyhow so i say hey let me let me come up with a great uh, a great recipe that I have for. Uh, oh, wait, uh, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Mm. I'm, not, oh, I'm not done with Rockies now. I'm thinking. Oh, about, you remember that? You remember their sauces? The name of their sauces? I think it was hot, medium, and super yeah. hot or something. They like had that. they had uh, mild, hot, and atomic Batman. I love that name, <laughs> atomic Batman sauce. I mean, that says it all. That stuff was hot. I couldn't eat that. I couldn't eat that stuff. You know what? I, I have it. The, that is a very clear memory. That's a very clear memory of me of standing in front of that fire because it was an open fire. Yep. The pit was right there. You had to stand screen on a door, wooden, screen door yeah, on top. A little wooden rail there or something. Tin shack, corrugated tin shack. 
no and license you, there so you had no license for sure and if you were over 18 you could go to the, uh, um, one of the guys at a trunk full of iced beer or something that like was that. carl carl yeah he had he had beer in his trunk yeah so, so, you, do you so know this is a culinary delight for us at uh, 16 17 years old yeah. so. do you know that carl hit the lottery twice i did not know that uh, yeah he hit it for big money and then he said he said man i found i had all these relatives i didn't know about <laughs> he, was, he was still there that, after he hit the lottery he still worked there he still sold i consider the right of passage to go to i honestly did if you had to go to oh, rockies yeah. one time for some reason we made an excuse to go down there anyway so this whole food thing yeah let's hear about it yeah the whole food thing is just on my mind i said i gotta i gotta talk to david about this so i remember i called you and text you and say listen this dude let me zoom in i'm all excited about it. So I have one of my special recipes, a very simple, simple recipe that of a, of a food, uh, uh, you know, a menu that I eat quite often. And it, um, and uh, I can, let me tell you how it's made. Because if you don't ask me how it's made. Uh, I'm, di I'm dying to hear what it's, how it's made. I, I mean, you, you're going to tell us what it is too, not just how right, it's I'm made. I'm going to tell you, no, I mean, just listen to, listen, gonna, you'll be able to build this yourself. This is simple you're, thing. You know, you're building okay, up first, tension here tension. you need bread first you got to have a good bread and and i don't recommend town talk bread or that type of bread because it's not consistent enough to uh, to hold this thing together and if you have a like a rye maybe or a good italian bread uh, something like that where you slice it yourself the thickness you want and so on mm -hmm. and so forth so still with you i got bread right you got bread and a, a good bread then we've got butter and that's butter with a capital b that rhymes with P and stands for peanut, peanut butter, that is. Peanut butter, the, okay. Right. The, uh, the uh, what do I have here? My, uh, it's the protein propellant of people without preferences. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> you know how long it, it took me a while to put that together. The protein propellant of people's without preferences. I want to say that like Porky can, Chetty, like can Porky you, Chetty can say that. <laughs> Can you spell it? I can't. I cannot. I cannot spell half of those words. Of course you can't. Okay, so we have two. I'm we sorry. Have two I, we have two ingredients, right? I'm we being got, rude. We, Go ahead. We got, two we ingredients. Got this bread. We got bread and peanut butter. We got peanut butter, creamy peanut butter, good peanut butter. Although, if you use that one with the oil in it, sometimes you really have to stir that up. But I'm saying, get yourself top quality, like Jiffy or, or Skippy. <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> so I'm you get you. extra sugar and at no then, charge. Yeah, and then yeah, that stuff's great. Now I'm going to give you the two magic ingredients to make this that makes this uh, uh, peanut butter. We'll call a sandwich peanut butter. Uh, Be, what's a good word for that? Uh, other Something. than peanut butter and bread. Okay, other than peanut bread, we don't want to. What so there's we, two other ingredients. Can we call it something other than a sandwich? A peanut butter concoction. A peanut butter. Okay. Uh, peanut you know, peanut butter good, delight. Yeah, peanut butter delight. Put a French right. word there or yeah. something. So the <laughs> other two ingredients that make this really, really good is a nice, uh, juicy, buxom what, tomato. Uh, tomato? Tomato. Peanut butter, peanut butter and tomato sandwich. No, I'm telling you, people are going to rave about this. We're going to get letters, tons of letters about how they enjoyed this. So I can't the, other ingredient, the other ingredient, <laughs> the other ingredient is mayonnaise. So we have a, a great bread. We got some okay. good peanut butter. We got peanut butter and uh, tomato, and we got mayonnaise. And I recommend Dukes. You ever Dukes. Had Dukes? No, Dukes mayonnaise. No, Dukes I mayonnaise. I, I that's I the best Hellman's for this. Here. Dukes. Okay. Yeah, you can. Well, I mean, you can have your preference for that. But now you've got this combination, and if you build it correctly, so that the bread lines up, you know, the shape of the bread is always lines up nicely, and you have the butter, peanut <laughs> mean, butter, to very edges. <laughs> Have to have it to the edge of the bread. To the edge, okay. Right, and you don't want Tapered. to overdo the tomato. Okay. So can you? I'm, I'm. You're, you're fathering this, right? You're getting. I, your yeah, I can this. see it. I'm. You know, I, I like uh, tomato and mayonnaise sandwiches. I have those sometimes, but I never had them with peanut butter. Well, peanut the, butter delight. Hmm. A little bit of science there. The, the, uh, the tomato and obviously the mayonnaise make the peanut butter very smooth. You know, it doesn't stick to the roof of your mouth or something like that. Okay. Now, when I was first introduced to this, I was as skeptical as many people may be for the, you know, the pinnacle of my culinary, <laughs> my culinary achievements. I built this, I ate it, and I've been eating these things regularly ever, ever since. And anytime there was a, a 
hunger pain or anything. You know, one of them things you need is something. This was what I built. So you can just picture sinking your teeth into that puppy and just uh, savoring that Duke's wow. mayonnaise. And I can't. Isn't, isn't your mouth watering already? I am. Yeah, I am slobbering all over the mic here. This is ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. Peanut so butter. So that's my mayonnaise. first, my first uh, culinary uh, attempt. And the second, I'm thinking I'm going to explain to you how I make uh, bologna and egg sandwiches the next time I talk about <laughs> those. <laughs> That's a poor man's. That's a poor man's meal, but uh, you know, I'll explain the take well, the, well, the the techniques of that. Now, let me let me bring you to to the. Uh, you asked about the uh, rhino dung soup. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, these, there was these... quite a few. There was quite a few people in the restaurant, and you know, you in the past said you were pretty gutsy to try some kind of a, a fish from Iceland. Oh yeah, rotten right. shark. Yeah. yeah, rotten shark. So I mean, yeah. here I said, geez, who can mess this up? Yeah. So I ordered uh, I ordered a little bowl of that, and I said it was, uh, I would say it was uh, beautifully served and, uh, you know, a nice uh, china ware. It was uh, exquisitely spliced. In other words, I can't I can spell exquisitely spiced. And uh, <laughs> and after all that, it still tasted like... <laughs> still tasted. Still tasted like... So it's dung soup. Dung soup. Rhino oh, dung soup. I wonder where they got the dung from. I think it was really from rhinos or i think it's one of those occasions where they just they wanted to just get a like cat, a gag yeah, yeah a catchy name and you know uh -huh. you, like they sometimes name things that uh, don't have the actual ingredients in so okay well, but it was hard to fathom caught your mentally. attention it caught your attention yeah and it was hard to fathom mentally you know you have yeah. that first bite is always a little bit uh, <laughs> you're hesitant so. yeah so anyhow i, I really be? believe we should we should throw in a, a good uh you know a good food thing but after about two episodes, we'll probably run out of recipes that uh, haven't been used a hundred times already. If we're, if we're talking about my recipes, we'd run out really quick. Yeah. Yeah. You don't yeah. happen to have one, do you? Um, I, I probably don't. I probably don't. I used to make a sandwich. Actually, I stole it. The sandwich from a restaurant in California, Pennsylvania, called it was called Alfano's, and they had, was there Alfano special, and I used to make it at home. And it was uh, an egg, a fried egg, you know, sunny side up kind of egg. And there was a, some bologna on it, <laughs> grilled bologna. There was, there was uh, something else. It would be like a, a spicier, another spicier meat and uh, tomatoes. Not, yeah, yeah, tomatoes, pickles. It was it terrific. Good. It, was terrific. Good. it was and terrific. It also sounds very regional. I don't know if that was popular in other parts of the country. I think it was uh, pretty much, yeah, pretty much yeah. of that restaurant. Yeah. I, I think bologna was a, I always thought it was uh, something local or maybe international, but, uh, but, uh, you know, I remember eating a lot of that stuff. I do occasionally today, but I read the ingredients a couple of times. <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, yeah, like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah a lot of, a lot of salt. So. Anyhow, so um, that's my story. Um, we're out here in Columbia, and uh, we're recording them. What's up? Are you got anything going on on your side? Do I got anything going on? Uh, you know, I got a couple uh, couple letters from afar. I, I made a couple notes on food. I don't know. It's just talking about Chinese food. Is that, has that uh, been any interest at all to you? I'm very, I'm very, very, uh, especially the uh, lo mein. I'm a lo mein guy. Okay. No, I'm just, you know, I'm just talking about the different regions that i've eaten food in china oh you were there oh yeah oh, yeah, yeah. you know I've, you... I've been there a hundred times oh uh, my soul yeah so you you got the real mccoy i did you know <laughs> it's funny when we we had some chinese visitors over here and we took them to a chinese restaurant in town all right and they said is this typical American food? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was so different from yeah. any, the, the, the real stuff they serve over there. Yeah, but I've the, run into that too. The, like, yeah, there's the, the Cantonese uh, that's down around, you know, Guangzhou, Guangdong province, uh, spills over into Hong Kong, I guess. That's kind of bland. That's probably the closest to what the food you get over here. And there's but, a, but you know it's like that everywhere it's like if it's uh you know the all you can eat buffet it's just straight american it is uh yeah. i don't know except the, for, for for the name general toes yeah. uh, you know chicken or something like yeah. that yeah so, they don't have that over there by the way I, i'm sure they don't sure. <laughs> I, don't I don't think I, they do yeah but they have uh then there's the sichuan that's the hot spicy stuff 
one of the ingredients they use are Sichuan mountain peppers. And you couldn't even bring those into the U.S. for a while, but you can now. And we have some, I actually had some in. Uh, they're that chip. hot? No, they're not that hot. They're, they're really tasty. They're a little like, little, like peppercorns. Oh. And they're, they sting. They, they actually have like an anesthetic on them. So if you just kind of rub it around on your tongue, it will numb your tongue. Oh. Only just temporarily, you know, just oh. for, you know, just for a couple seconds. Mm. It's just weird. And then it's real, uh, it's like a ultra, ultra spicy citrus or something like that. It's real interesting taste. It gives foods an interesting taste. Anyway. But you don't eat a lot of that now, do you? You eat a lot of Chinese food now? I, I don't. No, no, I don't. It's, it's hard to get great stuff here. Then the Hunan stuff, that's hotter than the Sichuan. That's out in Hunan province next, next to Sichuan. That stuff, that'll blow your head off. My, my favorite is the uh, Fujian. I used to go to the city of Shaman a lot. And it's all, it's pretty much seafood, basically. And they, it's really seafood done right. Yeah, man, it's the, whole, it's the whole fish or the whatever creature it is. It's really good stuff. So that, it doesn't really transfer over to our palate, I think. Especially if, um, if if a bologna and egg sandwich sounds appealing, <laughs> it's not, it's it's a little bit different than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Or or something, uh, you know, uh, a lot of the uh, sauces and stuff like that. Even I, anyhow, I can't take much of that anymore. Yeah, but time, the, yeah. time is taking its toll on the intestines, so it's <laughs> no longer capable yeah. of eating a lot of stuff. They're limited to certain. But you know, the, the kind of the most memorable gastronomic treat from china is is a drink uh, it's called mao tai or otherwise baiju i think mao tai is like that's the town where it's made or something like that it's like the worst alcohol you ever tasted it's like bad kerosene oh gosh and it's it's a wine type of thing or an alcohol well it's or like or... uh you know it's like 80 proof 100 proof something like that mm. and what what they would do we'd have these these big lazy susan dinners okay and then mm -hmm. say there'd be 10 of us maybe me and another american and say eight of them and, all and the, they, all they the would, international travels are familiar with that style i think yeah 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 and they then they would break out the mao tai and do mao tai toasts with little like shot glasses okay so the guy on, on the uh, the guy on my left will you know he'll do a toast with me all right so we we're we're one and one okay then the next guy will do a toast with me. Mm. So he's one and I've got two. You see where this is going? Oh, I see. It's the old, let's play a trick on. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's, yeah, let's, uh, yeah. let's, let's hurt the Yankee here. Yeah. Well, I, I forget, you know, sometimes I forget sometimes when, uh, that when I talk about something that you m more often than not saw or have, you know, actually saw the real place you You've actually tasted the real McCoy. So. The real McCoy. Well, you've been to yeah. some places. You've tasted some strange things. Uh, I true. I true. But I'm going to stick with my peanut butter <laughs> tomato and peanut mayonnaise butter sandwich delight. as a safe as a safe bet. I don't think anybody can mess yeah. that up. Number one. And once they get used to it, they'll thank me. They'll thank me because in a jam, when you look in the fridge and you only see a half a tomato, you got a good jar of Dukes and a little bit of bread. Can you picture yourself scouring around the kitchen looking for those four, four ingredients? <laughs> just to satisfy a nine o'clock hunger pang or something like that. So probably going to anyway. happen tonight. <laughs> it's probably going to happen. Do you have any letters? Uh, I do. I have a couple of things. I can, we can, let's go right to letters here. We don't have to do letters at the end. I, I got another, I got a great letter from old Buck Wayne. Mm -hmm. He's uh, re, he's responding to a couple of the podcasts here. Now, if it's, it's, it's a really long letter, but I'm just going to read parts of it. And no, Wayne, Wayne was a compatriot of yours. Or he sort? was. Yeah. We worked in the same company. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. We did. Uh, well, we did different things. So here he goes. He says, your stories about events in your youth, including those concerning your past teachers, in particular, Miss Neff, made me think about my unusual and eccentric sixth grade teacher calling this teacher, Mr. G. Okay. So he's not giving us his name to protect the guilty here. He says, while he seemed ancient back then, Mr. G was probably around 40 years old when I was in sixth grade. He was my first male teacher and quite intimidating for a number of reasons. 
He had a stout build as one would have as either a nose tackle in football or a rugby, rugby player used in the scrum. He had dark close cut hair and seemingly always had a five o'clock beard shadow. His facial expression sometimes, oftentimes, portrayed a tough and mean disposition, especially to us youngsters. His most fearful trait, however, was his reputation for fre frequently applying the then accepted disciplinary practice of paddling students. Paddling. Do you remember that? Paddling. I was paddling. Pa did, were you paddled? Oh, yeah. Do you want I to got, tell us I got, why? I got, I got. Was it, was it good, with good cause? Or? <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know what I did, but I got, I remember two distinct times of uh, hitting with something that the only, only objection was they were missing my uh, buttocks and uh, hitting the back of my legs. Hitting your the, thighs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they didn't Don't like you that. hate that. Yeah. yeah it's not, not, uh, otherwise, I calmed down, down after that. I, you I mean, calmed I, down. I, I calmed they, down. They beat you into submission, right? That was in sixth grade. Yeah, sixth grade, that. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I remember my sixth sixth grade teacher, Mrs. Robin. She was a paddler too. She wasn't she wasn't anything like this, Mr. G though. Them moment. them was the good old days. Wow, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He says they were, he, he says something like, It'll never be like that again, either for better or worse. Yeah. Ain't that the truth? Okay, so let, let me go on about Mr. G here. He's, he says, I was one of the better behaved boys in the class driven particularly by my fear of him. And I was still paddled multiple times that school yeah. year. <laughs> and he talks about, uh, he paddled the boys harder than the girls. So that was kind of discrimination, I thought. But, yeah. That's an interesting you memory. Any, you could do that. Yeah. yeah I, we're not memory. done yet. We're not done yet. This is, oh, a, really, okay. this no, no, a, really, this, this is a great letter. It's paradox Now, this is where he, he talked about Mr. G being kind of a, a strange teacher. So it's not just for paddling, he says, paradoxically, Mr. G was also somewhat of a romantic at heart. Early in the school year, he stated that he spent time in France was when he was in the armed forces and fell in love with that country, its people, one or more of the mademoiselles, I would guess, and their language. He then proclaimed that we would be learning French in his class, and he brought out a box of record albums containing French lessons. Thereafter, for an hour or so, at least two days a week, he would play the records and instruct us in French. Oh, that's great, I thought. Man, oh man. Huh. And he I would, agree. Another thing that he did, he says, he says, as an additional display of his romantic side, he would arrange a dance for our class on many Friday afternoons. After lunch, the boys would, he'd have the boys clear the classrooms and he gave us uh, rudimentary ballroom dance lessons. He'd spin the records. And uh, the boys had to politely ask each girl to dance and be gentlemanly and respectful with proper decorum when dancing. Heaven help huh. you if you were not. It was during these dances that I first remember ever holding a girl's hand, let alone dancing with one. Isn't that great how you can just... That's, that's, a, that's an early start. How you can remember something like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's great. Uh, that's great. So and I, I, I'm glad we jogged that memory. Yeah, I'm going to skip down to his last paragraph here now. He says, chiefly among the other events that stand out in my recollection of that school year was when the, the fourth grade teacher from the room next door tearfully ran into our classroom, yelling out that President Kenny, Kennedy had been shot. Uh -huh. One of those lifetime events when you remember exactly where you were. And don't we all? I, I remember uh, I, was, I, I, I was actually in Miss Neff's class when that happened. I was in I was in science class when that happened. Okay, so I was in uh, English writing, whatever we call about, it. About about thirty five feet from your classroom. Yeah, right, yeah, right, right next door, right? Yeah. Yeah. Remember, Mister. Uh, I know. Anyway, so that's uh, so that's Wayne's letter. Yeah. That's that's a great letter. Thank gonna, you, thank okay. you, Wayne. Thank you, All old right. Buck Wayne. Thank yeah. you, Wayne. Keep, keep listening, he's, and uh, if we remind you of anything else, he's he's, he's definitely him. he's definitely in the citizens requiring additional. He's, these are cis, citizens <laughs> representing alternative positions. You citizens cannot remember that. I can't. <laughs> What's that other like, word you placebo, never remember? Placebo. Placebo. <laughs> placebo. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Now, here's a, here's a short one. This is Sue, formerly from Clarion, Pennsylvania. She's, okay. com she's commenting on the, on, on the episode that was basically music. She said, when in Clarion, we used to conjure up rides to the Tomorrow Club in Youngstown, Ohio. Very good music on Sunday nights. Van the Man, that's Van Morrison. He's one of my favorites too, actually. Bonnie Raitt, Chris Christofferson, not one of my favorites, and Rita Coolidge. Pretty sure Jackson Brown, Freddie King, and many more. It was really cheap too. It had to be because I was dirt poor. <laughs> 
but we tried to get there as hard as we could. Well, that sounds like a that sounds like a great memory that we uh, made him give it some thought to. Yeah, there. yeah. So that's that's she. That's Sue, or she. She. Yeah. So uh, we got another another short one. This is kind of a slap of the wrist here. This is from Eddie Moran. I'm not. He doesn't say where he's from. And I talked that I lived in uh, Reading for a while. Reading, Pennsylvania, if you recall, I said it was in central mm -hmm. Pennsylvania. He said, Reading is not in central Pennsylvania. It's more in southeast Pennsylvania. It's like midway between Philadelphia and Harrisburg. All I got to oh. say is, well, excuse me, Eddie Moran. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to be a citizen. <laughs> Running rep after you're not going to be a citizen representing in an alternative position. Yeah. Forget it, Eddie. <laughs> Despite you being right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And now here's hey, the. Hey, Dave, are you outside? I don't think so. Why? Do I sound like I'm outside? No, I was going to say, it sounds like you have, yeah, I can hear your neighbors. Oh, you can? Yeah. Hang on. Shut the window. Hey, neighbor, could you dial it back? <laughs> They're acting up again over it. Sorry. Uh, Is that better? Uh, well, is that better? I mean, I mean, you're not fortunate enough to be in a studio like myself. So no, you know, no. There, there you go. I, I'm, I'm not uh, at the uh, Columbia Recording Arts. I have a big soundboard in front of me with six with six thousand in front of me. You know, so. Yeah. So here's a, this is this one just came in, and this was from a, a Mr. Kip King. This is hot off the. This okay. is hot. <laughs> Okay. This is hot this off is the to press. you. This I know hot. Mr. I know Mr. King. So well, I don't know thing. if it's the same one you knew. <laughs> it says this oh, is to, he says to Dell. Yeah. And it's it's a short letter. He says, Have you ever touched a monkey? Have I ever touched all it a says? Monkey? Have you ever touched a monkey? Oh my soul. This Think could be somebody. It. This could be somebody from the dark, dark side. Who who knows? But I do know the the uh, the name. I don't know why I, he asked that. I don't either, but uh, ask him. We'll ask him if he's listening to Two Old Bucks to go ahead and uh, and uh, send uh, send another uh, reply, uh, another clue. <laughs> <laughs> another Wait a minute! You were in Africa. Did you did you did you touch any monkeys over there? No, you don't touch. You <laughs> don't touch the monkeys <laughs> over there. Don't touch the monkey. No. You don't touch the monkey. Uh -huh. Forget it. That's like saying, see that little cute little baboon over there with the four inch incisors? Yeah, go over, <laughs> yeah, go over and try to pet him. Go over yeah. and hand him a sandwich and watch what happens to your arm. Well, no. you know, once I was, when I was on a, a safari in South Africa mm. uh, many years ago, this was probably uh, 2005, somewhere in there. I don't know. It doesn't matter really. Before the, before the tame elephant episode? This was before the tame elephant. Yeah, this was another <laughs> trip. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm never going to let you forget that because I never got to stand <laughs> next to one that big before. Yeah, I never had elephant dung soup. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, it's rhino, rhino, dung rhino soup. dung soup. Excuse me. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So I, I was so we were on a safari and we were eating lunch out on the deck this one day, and they, there were these monkeys in the trees and they were just you know watching us and they were trying to creep up on us. You know, you know how they do, mm -hmm. and they're they're running past us. They're jumping on the table and running. And then one swooped in and he grabbed, he grabbed the roll or something right out of the guy's hand, one of the guy's mm. hands. So, so, so the guide went inside and he got one of these big picture books of the wild animals and he, mm -hmm. he opened it up. It was a double page to a leopard. It was a be beautiful picture of leopard. He sat it right on the table and those monkeys, they ran up into the tree and they were screaming. Yeah, I, just like it was a real leopard. It was amazing. That's funny. That's funny. It's amazing. Yeah, that's funny. Who would have thought of that? Who would have thought uh, of that? Hey, did I ever tell you about Red? Red, Red, Red who ran? Red? No, Red, Red run, went run, out. Run. Red, Red went out and bought himself a monkey. You got a monkey, yeah. <laughs> thought I, maybe thought that's him what... out of, thought him out of place. <laughs> Stud poker. <laughs> well, maybe that's what instigated this letter from Mr. Kip King. Yeah, could be. Could be. could be right. It could be. That could be the. That, there's the I connection. Think that's, that's probably the had link. to do with the Porky Chadwick connection in the yeah. song. There you go. Red went and bought himself a monkey, and yeah. he taught him how to play stud poker. And you that's all sing. I'm going to sing about. You don't that. sing any better than I do. No, I, I don't. We, so, so that's the end of the letters. That's the that's the end of the letters. I can. Uh, you got you got anything else off the top of your head? I got. Uh, uh, the, remember, I said be kind yep. to your mailman. Yep. Be kind to your mailman. So you think we should just say goodbye now? Hello? 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 Dale? Dale? 
Oh, looks like we lost Dale, folks. So I'm going to have to fill into him since he's zoomed out somewhere in Columbia. So all I can say is, this is Dave. And this is Dell. And we are the two, the two old, old bucks. And I'll leave you with these words of wisdom from the late, great Clarence Clemens. Order the good wine. Think about it, folks. Adios. Adios.